Welcome to our 2022 Teachable tutorial for beginners. So in this video, we're gonna sign up for Teachable, create our first online course, create a sales page so that we can start selling our brand new online course. If you wanna follow along with this tutorial, I'll put a link down below in the description. This is our affiliate link. So if you click and make a purchase, we may earn a commission, but at no extra cost to you. So here's what it looks like when you get to Teachable. One thing I wanna show you before we start signing up is to show you the pricing really quickly. So they essentially have four different plans. They have a free plan, the basic plan pro and business, you can pay either annually or monthly. If you end up paying monthly, you're going to pay more per month than the annual plan. The big difference between the different plans, at least the free and the basic, is that Teachable is going to charge you a fee on top of the fee for the processing. So you see the processing fees for using Stripe with US credit and debit cards or PayPal, it's essentially the same across the board. But if you're on the free plan, you're gonna pay a dollar plus 10%. If you're on the basic plan, you pay an additional 5% in fees. So maybe start with one of the lower cost or free plans. If you start having more sales, it makes sense to upgrade to lower the fees per course that you sell. Scrolling down further, this is all the same. You can get payouts daily or monthly. So if you've seen some of the other tutorials for either sales pages or online courses such as SamCart, it doesn't include video hosting, so you need to pay for that separately. With Teachable, that's 100% included in any of the Teachable plans. If we scroll down to support, you can get email support for any. You need to upgrade to business or I think pro to get live chat, the different number of admins, and then here's where some of the differences are. So if you want a custom domain, so for example, for us, if we wanted it to be courses.thefigco.com, um, we would need to at least upgrade to the basic plan. We can't do that with the free plan. We would have a teachable domain. So it could be the figco.teachable.com as an example. Also, there's no coupons with the free plan. You can't drip co content. So if you want new content to come out every week, as soon as someone purchases, they would need, you would need the basic plan. Okay. Email marketing is available with that. You can integrate with a community such as Circle, what we end up using for our communities, but again, not available with the free plan. Third-party integrations are available here. And then certain things you need the pro plan for. So Zapier, graded quizzes, course certificates, course compliance, upsells, advanced reports, unbranded websites. So they delete everything that is teachable related. And then there's a couple of other options for the enterprise plan. I imagine for most of you watching this video, it would be one of the first three. One other thing I want to mention is Teachable is always doing some type of challenge or other thing to help you create online courses. This is only going for going for a couple of additional days. So it may not be this exact launch accelerator challenge, but I just want to show you really quick some of the things that Teachable does to help you get through the entire process of the scary thing of creating your first online course. Okay, so week one, set up your Teachable site, color, font, logo, URL, course topic, and set up payment so you're ready as soon as somebody wants to pay for your course. Week two, set up the sales page, tailor it to your pre-sale. Another thing with pre-sale, what we end up doing is creating the sales page, having an idea for the course, and then over the first couple of weeks, or maybe we have the first module done before the actual the date of the course beginning, but then we're creating the course along with our students. So this is a good way to test the idea. If no one ends up purchasing your course, you don't actually have to go through and create all of it. So that's one of the things that we recommend doing that they're talking about here. So determine the pricing, create the thank you and checkout pages as well. Map out the framework for your course, write the course outline, build the first lecture. Then week four, find your audience, create your welcome video, and then build out the first section of the course, not the entire course yet. And then in week five, promote and launch your course, uh, start gathering feedback, wrap up, and then go on continuing creating the rest of the course content after the cart closes and you have a good group of students. So that's a challenge they're currently running. Just check the bar along the top when you're going to sign up for Teachable to see if they have anything like that going on when you get started. I think with this, one of the things is I think you need the um, the basic plan. So you do need to have a paid plan to participate. But what we're gonna do now is just get started with the free plan. So select plan, create an account. Go to next. Okay, the onboarding survey. There's the onboarding. I'm not sure what that's gonna help with. Let's just follow along with what they're recommending to do. So create a product. So is this a course or coaching? We're creating an online course. Next. Okay, product limit for bundles increased to 100. Okay. Sometimes it's good to create bundles of various courses together um, as a way to sell more. So this is going to be, 
Okay, create your YouTube channel and publish four videos in four weeks. Create the course. Okay, so this is the beginning of a course. Like what we were saying before is we're not gonna go and create all of this before we go out and sell it. So what this is probably gonna be right now is kind of a welcome module and maybe you would lay out, hey, these are the dates when the different modules are gonna be there. Maybe you have a list of the outline of the course, but you don't have to do all of this part before you start selling. So you may have welcome video and next step. So this is just gonna let everybody know, hey, here's what's gonna happen. So to edit the individual lessons, you can just click on that right here and then you can go and choose the layout for it. So what we could do first is maybe wanna have some text saying, hey, the first module is coming on March, 20, March 1st, 2022, add text. Okay, so that's there. Then what do we wanna do? So we may want to add a file we can add a quiz, code, custom code, add an upsell. So during the course, you can actually add upsells for other courses that you offer. What I would probably add here is a video. One of the other things we might wanna do is, so if we added some text as well, what we could do is um, tell us about your new YouTube channel down below. So we can add that below where the video is gonna be, but we have to wait for that to load. We can turn on comments and then everybody can introduce themselves right here in the welcome module. Okay, so there we go, video is there. Now we should be able to change the order like so. We can go to preview. You can see with the comments turned on that this is what this is gonna look like. It's gonna tell everybody if I'm leaving comments that I'm the instructor of the course. Now let's go to publish. So as soon as someone purchases the course, they would have access to this video and everything from this first lesson. So if I go to new section, it's essentially a new module, and then you can have subsections that are actually the, the lessons where you have videos and text. So this could be create your channel. Okay, so the first thing might be so to create your YouTube banner, maybe the first one. So again, I can go in here, upload a video, upload text. We can add another lecture. Is I could leave these blank for now and just say, you know, the date that each one is coming out or just not go and publish each one of these lessons until, you know, week by week as I add additional content. But that's essentially the process of creating the course. So the product is ready. The next thing that we want to think about is the sales page for the product. Okay, so here is the example of the sales page. Really easy to edit everything. So you can see, just click on anything and edit it. So if I go to replace image, so there's a couple, um, uh, there are a couple options. So Dropbox, Google Drive, OneDrive, custom source, your computer, or you can even search for web images. So record video, select one file and upload. Okay, so this is our banner photo now. So what we could do is update this with the course. And then down below we have the text for the button, get started maybe. And then, I don't know, we could put the price we wanted for $97, let's say. So this would just take someone directly to the checkout page. How Teachable works is this is the main page where you present the course, and then you have a checkout. This is just a summary of everyone adds their email, their credit card, et cetera. It wants me to set a price first. So set a price. Okay, add pricing plan. So this is a one-time purchase. And what did we say, $97. So add a pricing plan, there we go. There is now a pricing plan. Okay, so there you go. Go to checkout page, pricing plan, $97, good to go. So I would recommend creating a video for your sales page, regardless of what the course content is about. Let's the viewer get to know you a little bit better versus just reading everything here. Go to new block and video and edit. So all right, and then upload video and All right, upload complete. I would have this right after the banner. So I would put the video right there. We can let that think for a little bit. One of the things that I noticed on the sample page is there's a few things that I would not include. So featured products. So you're just selling one thing. You don't want to distract people with other, other products right now. You want to just focus on whatever course this is. So this section, I would not include. Where, which one is it? Featured products delete. Additionally, um, you're focused on selling, not growing your email list right now. So I wouldn't 
add this one. If the course wasn't available right now, you maybe want to grow your email list and say, hey, as soon as the course is ready or when we relaunch the course, give me your email address and I'll let you know. But that's not the case with what we're doing now. The pricing is what I would end with. This will show you part of the curriculum. I think if you had more lessons, there'll even be a drop down button so they can see the entire course curriculum before they make the decision to purchase the course. So that's the majority of how the sales page would work. You can just go through each one of these sections, edit the image, the text, the background, add new sections. If you're happy with the sales page, let's go through a handful of other things with the Teachable platform. So sales page saved and updated. Okay, so we now have the launcher channel sales page published. Now let's look at the checkout page. So we can edit this right here. So these are really simple uh, checkout pages. You'll have these three different sections. If you have some type of guarantee, it's good to mention it here on the checkout as well as on, on the sales page. As soon as you go through and update each of these, you're good to go. So publish this. Okay, so let's just keep following along with their recommended process. So edit homepage. So you have the school name, a short description, and so this is where you'd want all of the products to be viewed as well as maybe some way to capture somebody's email address. So all this is the exact same thing, you know, as what we went through with the sales page. Let's go back again. Okay. So they do have terms of use, privacy policy, and the homepage. I would review each of these things individually and feel free to update them how you think makes sense. Okay. Now, so along the side, you have dashboard, your user. So that's you as a user, as well as your students and the site. So let me just run you through the different things within the site. So you have the theme. So what you want to do is add your logo, a school thumbnail, as well as a favicon. All those are ready. You can update the font family. So there's a bunch of options here and then they have color palette. So you could just go through and update each one of those individually for your brand color, or you can just take one of their presets. So that's everything within the theme. Here is where you can update the domain. So the, the, the teachable domain. So the figco courses.teachable.com. You could connect a custom domain. So for example, courses.thefigco.com, or it could be just your homepage and be the figco.com, for example, but you need to update grade to a basic plan. I'll put the instructions down below in the description to connecting your domain. So if you upgrade and go through this process, it's really easy. You just need to change the CNAME record within the DNS. The instructions explain, so don't worry. So a lot of times within the courses, there'll be a section with your biography. So you could go to edit. We can add an image. There we go. So I think this is if you want to crop the image. So maybe we'll make this square upload and then just your bio. All right. So something like that. Now you can add your bio to, to, for example, your sales page, if you want, there's a few places where you could add it. Then you'll here is where all the comments could come in. There's a bunch of custom stuff. So custom text code snippets, all the stuff we're not going to really worry about for now. So if you have a higher plan, you can send emails within teachable. And then here are the courses. So what we want to do now is it wants an image. We already have one of those. Okay. There is our course image, the details. So course title, course description, the author is me. So you have some course compliance. If you have an upgraded plan, default pages, thank you page. Okay. Let's go through these settings now to make sure that we have everything set up for our course. So if we want to add our business name, there we go. It read my mind. So you may want to add a mailing address. And then that is, oh, and then Teachable account. So I would recommend turning this on. A lot of people have accounts with Teachable already. You don't want them to have to create a new login and email for this specific course. So I would recommend turning this on. I'm not going to walk you through step by step how to set up the payments, but know that your students can pay with a credit card or debit card as well as use PayPal. If you want more information, I'll put links down below in the description that walk you through step by step how to get this all set up. Um, another quick thing, so notifications. So do you want to know every time a student joins, if they enroll in a paid course, they enroll in a free course? Basically, what do you want to get emails from? If you want to upgrade your plan, here's where you can make the choices, so monthly or annual. 
billing, so obviously adding your credit card information, your billing address, et cetera. Integrations is something that's really important. So there are a ton of different integrations. So for example, some that we use are Google Analytics, the Facebook Pixel, we're connected to what else? ConvertKit, Zapier, um, we can connect it with Circle, the platform we use for our communities. All of those you can set up through integrations, but you need to be on a ba basic plan or higher. Okay, so here are the different roles. With the free plan, you can only have one primary owner. With the upgraded plans, you can have authors and affiliates as well. You can also view this if you go to the users and then along the side here, you see leads, owners, authors, affiliates, and custom. Custom, I think you need to be on the enterprise plan. Additionally, you can sell coaching services through Teachable. To get that set up, you can click on coaching right here and run through something similar to what we did for creating a course. They also have bundles that you can create down below. So that's essentially a combination of different products of yours. So it could be the coaching services or it could be different courses that you offer. I think there is one last page we did not finish, which would be the thank you page. So if we go here, you can see what the thank you page would look like. You can also add other blocks as well. So you could add a page for other products. You can add an upsell here. So for example, someone purchases the launch your YouTube channel, get your first four YouTube videos ready, and then we could have a premium YouTube course that we could sell right here on the thank you page. So if you're good with this, let's actually go back to the course. So these pages are all ready. And then if we go back to info and let's publish it. Let's just publish everything. All right, so we published our course and we're ready to start selling it through Teachable. If you wanna learn more about how to launch your online course, we have a video that runs through that in a lot more detail. I'll link to that up above right here. If you wanna see how to sell your online course through sales pages with Samcart, the sales page software we're currently using, I'll link to that video right here. Hope to see you in another video. Bye-bye.